Welcome to our lecture online. Now that we've written the wave equation as the product of three separate equations, each of them a function of one of the three variables, r, theta, and phi, we now want to take the large differential equation, which contains all three functions and all three variables, and somehow separate them into three separate differential equations, each of them only a differential equation of a single function with a single one of those three variables. So, how do we do that? Well, the first thing we want to do is we want to take this quantity right here, this term, and move it to the right side because this term is the only term that contains the variable phi and the function phi. So we move that over to the right side, or, well, that's not the left side. Let's call that the right side. There we go. Call that the right side. And now that's what the function, or that's what the differential equation looks like. Now when we take a look at it, we realize that the right side contains the function with the variable phi and the left side contains the two functions with the variable theta. So we've in a way separated the functions and the variables. But how can functions of different variables be equal to one another? Well, the condition that requires that the only way they can be equal to each other, the only way that the left side can be equal to the right side, because they are, after all, functions of different variables, is if they're equal to the same constant. Hmm, equal to the same side? Nope, to the same constant. How's that? Wow. So let's change that to constant. That makes a lot more sense. So they can only equal the same constant. And what we're going to do then is we're going to take the right side and set it equal to m sub l squared. Now, what is m sub l? Well, m sub l is what we call the orbital magnetic quantum number. So we've very carefully chosen that constant. Of course, in the beginning, if you've never worked this out, you may say, well, I don't know what that constant is, and you're absolutely right. So we can just simply put c for constant, and then lay around trying to figure out what that constant may be. And that's exactly what they did a long time ago. But now we have the luxury of knowing that this has to be equal to m sub l squared to make everything come out right. And so we're going to use, utilize that information and then rewrite our differential equation. Once we set this to the right side of the equation, replace it by m sub l squared. And now we have the left side, which is a differential equation containing the two functions r and theta, and set it equal to a constant, just like we said, the right side of the equation equal to that constant. So now notice we already have one differential equation here, not particularly in the correct format, that only contains the one variable phi. Now we're going to do the same with the remainder of this equation, somehow separate it, and also set it equal to some constant. So then we end up with three separate differential equations. We can solve each one of them separately, then take the solutions of the three, multiply them together, and then end up with a solution for the wave function of the electron in the hydrogen atom. So that's the strategy. So we have our first differential equation. We'll rewrite in different format. Now let's find the other two differential equations. Let's continue with the next video.